Hello everyone. Um, as you know, I started this channel probably in a casual way. I didn't really know what I was doing and I probably still don't know what I'm doing. But it's fun making videos and one of the greatest things is receiving your questions and comments. And I was surprised from the start um, how thoughtful people were in their questions for me. And one of the questions actually that I've been kind of stockpiling is what gun uh, do you recommend for the end of the world? So at the first time I received this question was from a, a fellow in Denmark. I'm sorry I don't remember your name. I did look for your um, message or email or whatever, but it looks like YouTube has rearranged messages. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's a serious question, and I thought, well, I should probably address this, but I, you know, I'm not sure what the end of the world means. So I thought, uh, obviously, this is not a good scenario, and somebody is thinking about what happens when this bad scenario happens. Uh, but the questions never stopped coming, so I just sort of stockpiled them. And actually, today I was going to make a video on a Mexican Mauser carbine, which is a great video, uh, but it's more about collecting guns and kind of, it's, it's not in that area of seriousness that involves the end of the world. So, <clears throat> um, I'll try not to make this too long, but at the same time, um, a subject like this requires some consideration and thought. Uh, so when when this fellow was talking about the end of the world, we exchanged some messages and then other people were writing me and I'm assuming we're talking about no power, no water. Um, if, if any of you out there know what the nine meal rule is, this is a thing out there, you can Google it instead of me wasting your time explaining it to you. But in short, after nine meals, things get pretty bad. And so I thought, in fairness to all of you who asked me this question, I should probably divide uh, my answer in two. Obviously, initially, if everything goes wrong, there's no power, there's no water, there, the cell phones don't work, there, there's no communication. Um, no one knows what's going on and no one knows what's 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 happening or what went wrong and we've all seen this on all kinds of Hollywood movies but these people are writing me like the real deal this is actually happening so I thought well in fairness to that scenario the first period of time based on my experience and and training will be very intense it'll be very difficult uh, to survive frankly assuming everything breaks down because um, if there is no power, no water, no government, etc., no police, then it's a situation of anarchy. So, in anarchy, what do you need to survive? Uh, and again, so many variables. Are you alone? Do you have children? Do you have a family? Um, you know, where are you living? There are a million questions that I would have to ask, which is why I just kept putting these questions aside. But I thought, well, Maybe I'll make a video that can generally answer the questions. And uh, so for the first period of time, when it's really intense, and, and um, the problem is just surviving, then you would probably, uh, and I, somebody asked me how long would that period of time be because I'm, I'm writing all the time. Um, it, so the, 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 the experts say maybe 90 days. It could be longer, it could be shorter, but that's that intense period of time where there's kind of a sorting out of the people who are going to try to make it to the next level of survivability. Uh, I mean, obviously, if there's no food in the house, everybody's going to think, well, where's the food? So it's in the stores, but you go to the stores and they're either empty or there are people in there and they're defending the stores that they held or freezer um, warehouses and you know people get very smart very quick when it comes to surviving um, so you can stay in your house probably safely um, and hope that law and order returns but if I understood all these questions correctly you're saying please tell us what happens if law and order doesn't return 
it means nobody's coming to the house. There is no water coming. There is no food coming. So I thought for that first period of time, um, and I'm, I'm going to try to speak generally here so that I don't get into graphic details, but for that first, first period of time, I, you may, it may surprise you because I, I'm a gun collector, I'm you know, um, not into this intense thinking, but the Benelli M4, um, I bought one of the, the, I bought this gun, I, you'd be surprised when I bought it, it was bright green and it was labeled on one side Desert Storm. Someone had wisely painted it bright green uh, in preparation for the desert conditions, um, and I'm being sarcastic here, of Desert Storm. And I meticulously went over this uh, gun and it was an odd, some kind of polymer. I don't think it was Rust-Oleum, it was something else. Anyway, it doesn't look too bad, I think you'll agree. I know where all the dogs are buried on this thing, but um, it looks okay and it always works. It's a short recoil shotgun, 12 gauge. Uh, it shoots anything, it always cycles. And um, I, I was sitting here and, and I'm gonna get to the second part of this equation for the first 90 days uh, in a second. But um, as you may know, I've had some kind of training, obviously not as much as these Navy SEALs and all the rest of these people, but when you're in a situation of stress, everything you think you know about yourself goes out the window. You usually miss everything. You can't hit, it, hit anything consequently. Um, all kinds of jitters and adrenaline enter the equation because we're not accustomed, civilians are not accustomed to combat situations. So when you're talking about the, this theoretical end of the world um, and anarchy and people are after you and survivability is, is, is the order of the day, um, I would have to say I would pick the Benelli M4. And why the Benelli? Because I happen to own one it's got two ways of bleeding gas off the barrel that may be beyond your understanding or maybe you know that ex perfectly. This gun, sorry, it's not short recoil. This is gas operated. Um, I was thinking of another shotgun, which I was considering before the video. I would go with the Benelli M4. Um, hit probability is high. Uh, it may not be apparent to everybody out there, but even trained personnel, and I don't mean to insult anybody, the hit probability just goes out the window when it's, it's, it's a combat situation and adrenaline enters the equation. Uh, one really has no way of explaining what it's like um, until you're in that situation. So Benelli M4, uh, you can't hit anything far away, but if you use slugs, you can extend your range somewhat it won't jam, it'll keep working. And for those first 90 days, which I'm assuming for most people will be an urban situation, um, so we're talking short range, you have a good chance with this, and keep feeding it as you go. Uh, that's hard to remember. Anyway, I'll explain that another time. And then if you decided that, that the shotgun equation just was no good, um, this happens to be a Canadian SA-20. Uh, this is not easy to get. Some people, they're, they're sometimes called a C7. And again, it'll surprise you. I, I don't collect black rifles, but I've tried them and I know them and I understand them. And um, I think the SA-20 is arguably one of the best uh, uh, of, of this type of rifle. Now here, the limitation is uh, while well, you have volume of fire, that's an advantage. Um, if you're familiar with the firearm, which you may or may not be, it, it is easy to operate and you can hit targets at a distance. Again, from my experience, you're mostly not dealing with targets at a distance. It's surprising how close most combat is conducted. Now I'm not talking about situations in Iraq or Afghanistan. That's an entirely different league and I respect that and, and uh, know that. Um, anyway, so SA-20, but it could be any, Daniel Defense, Smith & Wesson, it doesn't matter. Um, you just don't have the hit probability, in my opinion, and it's a humble opinion, that you have with the, with the shotgun. Whether it's slugs shot or buckshot, 
with the shotgun, you have a better chance. The average person of hitting something, not to mention that if something happens to you, you can hand the shotgun to somebody else in those first, and they may hit something. These, it's not so easy moving targets at even 100 yards, or people talk, well, I can hit at 400 yards. Well, maybe you can, but what about the, the other guy or your wife or what have you? So, um, I hope that part makes sense, but these are my two choices. Uh, this is the SA-20, but it could be an M4. It doesn't, it, they're, they're interchangeable. Um, but my vote goes for, for the first 90 days, especially for the people in urban situations, um, the Benelli or something like it. So I hope that makes sense. Then you make it through those 90 days. Now, these are semi-automatic firearms. And again, I'm, all of you that wrote me about an end of the world scenario in perpetuity, so law and order is not returning. Then, of course, we're talking about an entirely different reality. And so I thought, well, I should just tell them the truth. And that is that these guns, even all you military people know, they'll fail. The semi-autos eventually fail. The springs um, wear out, parts wear out just by nature because of the high volume of fire. Um, these will wear out, and if there are no springs available and gun shops available, the parts are small, the assemblies are complicated, fixing them is a pain in the neck, and I know I've tried with, without proper tools and proper equipment. So basically, these work, they're excellent, and then past their life expectancy, they are useless, their plastic stocks melt in fires, their receivers deform, um, it, 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 these only work if there's civilization. So you, these go away, and then for the long term, which is maybe the more interesting part of the video, I had to, the, the question was always, what one gun? That's not easy, one gun. So I thought, um, the one gun, the one firearm, that will work, as far as I know, basically indefinitely, is the Mauser 98. The parts are large, the assemblies are easy to understand, and even if they were to break, they're so common, and how they work is so self-evident, you could probably find parts for a Mauser 98 almost anywhere, eventually, and then get your Mauser 98 working again. You know these uh, destructive testing things they do where they fire an AR until it stops working? Um, and of course it's compelling because it's either semi-auto or full auto. Well, I haven't seen one where somebody takes crates and crates of ammo and just keeps firing a Mauser 98. And I, I could be wrong, but I think the reason is you could sit with tens of thousands of rounds and keep firing this, this Mauser 98 as long as you like. And I think it'll keep working. Uh, I've owned quite a few of them. Don't remember really anything going wrong. So if you're, it's a rifle, this is a Mauser 98. It's an FN action, but it doesn't matter. If you come across a Mauser 98, uh, this is a 30 out 6, which is kind of nice because it's a great round, as everybody knows. It probably will never, for practical purposes, stop working. And even if the parts were not available, there's probably a way for you to fix them or get somebody else to, that you might encounter to fix them. Um, that's on the rifle side. The rifle gives you range. Um, the Mauser 98 gives you reliability. 30 out 6 ammunition is probably going to be around for a long, long time. And I didn't talk about ammunition in this whole equation, but it's a, it's a consideration for sure because ammunition in this end of the world scenario is going to become worth more than gold if you're lucky enough to get a firearm that the ammunition fits, which leads me to the next level, and that is the humble and very common Remington 870. Now with the shotgun, you have all the benefits of the Benelli M4. It's not a semi-auto, obviously, pump action. Um, you know, different 
buddies of mine told me that they've run 80,000 rounds through them or more. I, you know, and I don't know how people are going to live in this end of the world scenario. You have a range limitation. If this is your only firearm, you can probably make it work for you more often than somebody with a rifle. Of course, if somebody has a rifle, they can get to you from a lot further away than you can with this thing, with a 12 gauge with slugs. Um, but a lot of people would probably say the Remington 870, just because of real life testing, um, and I mean police departments and places around where I, I knew somebody in um, uh, Sumatra uh, who somehow had one of these and it was made like in the 60s or something and it was not in the best shape. It was jungle conditions and they had fired it and the whole village had fired it and everybody had fired it and, and countless times and the 870 keeps working. But again, um, it's a little bit funny to say the end of the world fire is the Remington 870. Uh, and I'm not laughing at Remington. It's just something with all our guns worth tens of thousands. I mean, is this really it? And I, I have a hunch it probably is. But if you don't believe that and you have to have a rifle. And I, I thought about the Remington 8, uh, 700, millions of them around. As you know, I probably can study any firearm I want to and I, I, I looked this way and that way and there are small parts and the trigger is complicated and there are small pieces in the trigger. The Mauser 98, I think it was a coincidental thing that it just happened to be one of those, let's call it miracle um, inventions and everything came together and it came together uh, perfectly then and it's still the same now I couldn't so long as you can feed this rifle 30 out 6 ammo um, of course the AR or the M4 or whatever is gonna consume a lot more 223 ammo in the first years of its life and then that firearm will fail and this will keep firing and I think it'll unless you break the firing pin uh, which is hard to do but It'll keep firing and it'll keep ejecting. You can be surrounded by a mountain of brass and the, the, the Mauser 98 will still work. So if you, the people that asked me this question, if you said which rifle for the end of the world, which is giving me a little more leeway, I'd say the Mauser 98. And which shotgun for the end of the world, um, I'd say the Remington 870. And all of you that said it should be a single shot, maybe that's true. And like I said, I, I respect all opinions, but there's no need to go to a single shot. The repeaters are fine. The 98 is a repeater. The 870 is more reliable, I think, than just about any firearm. So um, maybe that's not the right opinion, but that's what I came up with. And thanks for writing me all these thought-provoking and dramatic, and let's just hope we never have uh, end of the world scenario and um, those, like I said, those f that rule about nine meals and 90 days, and they study it to death, and I just hope that it never happens, but I guess whatever the expression is, we should plan for the worst and hope for the best. So anyway, heavy duty video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.